and head on over to our website right now if you would like to know how the new Swiss format works with the Champions League draw. It can be a bit of a minefield if you're looking at it for the first time, but don't worry, Dale Johnson has you covered. There'll be more talk about that. The draw was made today. It's been revamped, got more teams in it, more games in the group stages as well. And that's why Gab's got that lovely backdrop right now because he was in Monaco today for the draw. What stood out to you, Gab? Well, uh, look, I mean, we knew that uh, being a top seed wasn't really going to be uh, an advantage because of the way the way the draw works. You play, you know, two teams from part one, two from part two, two from part three, two from part four. So in reality, it comes down to what is your strength of schedule? What are your opponents like? Um, people have calculated this on paper. Paris Saint-Germain certainly looks like, looks like they have, you know, a relatively tough schedule. Feyenoord. I think statistically they have the toughest schedule of all. Um, people can go and, and they can draw their own conclusion. What I'd be interested in is if I were a Paris Saint-Germain fan, hello Jules, um, I would look at this and say, how many points do I need to get into the top eight? Because that's what matters. That means that I don't have to play those two playoff games in January and, and I get seated. And uh, a lot of uh, the analytics nerds who've looked at this and whatnot, they estimate that 18 points um, will, should get you there, uh, maybe 16 or 17. And so you look at these eight games, where are those 18 points coming from? You know, uh, how are they going to get there? Um, and equally, I think for the, for the worst teams, most people estimate that it's going to be eight or nine points uh, for them to qualify for the playoffs. And I think that's how we should look uh, at these schedules. More interesting from the beginning, more Is games it? that matter. Is that not something you could be on board for? Or the games didn't matter in the group stages? Well, sometimes it would get to the end of the group stages. It might not matter so much, well, right? we have to figure out how this is going to work. I mean, I'm, I'm happy to give it time and, and, and see how it goes, but... I mean... I don't so it's know. going to be... It's going to, it's going to so teams are going to do exactly what they did in the group stage. But it is the group stage of, still. Depending on where they're sitting at the tie, and they'll play, whether they'll play the reserves or not. Which is what they did the in the yeah, last lot. Stevie, Stevie, sorry if I jump in. That's that's not quite right. Because the big difference is when you're in the group stage, once you had the group one, okay, you're Man City, you've won your first four games, and then in the last two you pay, you know, you play Taylor Harvard Bellis and his dog, and that's fine, right? Uh, and you probably still win because you're City. And then you're a top seed, and then you go into a draw. The diff that was but that's the old system. There was no difference uh between the, the group winners in how they got seeded. They didn't have any advantage. Um, the difference now is that if you finish, if you finish number one in the big table, let's say, you end up playing, it, it gets seeded kind of like Wimbledon, right? You have a higher seed, so you avoid, uh, so they're like the number two and the number three team would be on the other half of the draw, right? If you see what I'm saying. So the seeding then matters because that continues all the way to the final once you get to the knockouts. Um, that's, I think, what they're hoping is going to be the incentive that, yes, of course, if you lock up first place in the big table early, fine. But when you're only playing eight games, that's statistically very difficult to do. So, so the idea is people will compete to try to get the higher seeds because it gives you an advantage um, going forward. There are thousands of millions of people around the world that watch this competition. We'll all be watching it. Well... I'll be honest with you. The same crappy games that were in the group stages are not going to go away. And they're not worth getting out of bed for, most of them. Now, maybe, maybe this new thing will change it a little Liverpool bit. Liverpool take on Real Madrid, also by 11. You know, so there's always, those, there's yeah. always games like that. They're, but don't just tell me about those games. You know, tell me about the crappy ones. Well, we just saw PSG. Right. That they're going to get more out. money for, there's more games, so there's more revenue, so there's more money to share about, blah, blah, blah. Right. Let's just see how it all pans out. At the moment, it's a mishmash. And apart from Gab and a few and a, a few a lot of people that have just read into this, most mere mortals that just want to enjoy the game have not got a scooby do. A scooby how this is all gonna work. Right? It's just complexity but, over complexity. And money. Craig it, it, Craig, it is complex, but there is a big difference about the big games. You can say they've always been there, but they haven't really always been there in the group stage because if you're a number one seed in the group stage, if you're one of the top eight seeds uh, in, in the old system, 
you're not playing another number one seed until you get into the knockout rounds. Under this system, every top seed is going to play two other top seeded teams. That's what they're counting for. And that's why we're getting, you know, games like Liverpool, Real Madrid and whatnot. Every number one seed is going to play every other number one seed twice. And so you will have those big games. Now, could they turn out to be crappy nil-nil draws? Sure. That can always happen, but that's football. But at least on paper, you are going to get these box office clashes. You're guaranteed them. Frank, have you been following along and what do you think of it all? Yes, I've been following along and uh, the whole afternoon long I was trying to understand how it would work and uh, I mainly understood you know, how it works and uh, well, you know, I want to give a, a chance to the, to the product as I always say and see how it works. Um, I, I, it could be interesting in a way that, yeah, we'd be like big, big games, we could be a final of the Champions League, uh, even just right now and that's, that's a good thing. Um, I, I have no doubt that we'll have some crappy game, as Craig says, and, uh, and it's hard to avoid them. Um, and uh, it is what it is. Um, they want to make more money. They found a way to make more money, but they try to make it more attractive. So let's give them a chance to prove us that uh, it's more interesting this season than it was uh, the past seasons. And, uh, and we'll make a statement at the end of uh, the first uh, attempt. All right. Well, if you would like to know more about it, because it sounds like you guys would like to no, know. No. Trust me. No, okay. Trust me. No, we're good. There's not enough money in the world to make me read <laughs> a long article on this. Oh, well, you don't need to read a long article because Gab, Ryan O'Hanlon and Mark Ogden I, have actually well, sat down and talked about it not enough and explained money in the world it in depth. To make me this watch is the a perfect way this. for all of you at home and Craig Burley to go and watch over on our YouTube channel.